There's no mucking around with you guys, eh? No, I've got things to do. This is our uh, Tim, and he wants me to give him a shout out. I actually got Tim his job with Clint. Oh, pretty good. Yeah. Best job I've ever had. So, That's yeah. awesome, man. Yeah, yeah. It's oh, worked out really well. Yeah, it's nice when you enjoy going to work every day. Yeah. So did you lose your other job because of mandates? Yeah, yeah. So they said I either get a vaccine or lose a job. So, like, so did it work out like, better for you in the end? Yeah, yeah. Woohoo! Was for anything better, so yeah. yeah everything, yeah. yeah. And you don't, the good thing about it is you don't get any blood clots. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. See you later, buddy. Hey, thank you. Cheers. Boys making hay and also some baleage. Hey Arv, how the hell did you lift these long run sheets? They are one piece, how did you get them up there mate? I oh, Byron did them by himself. Oh did you Byron? Yeah, he yeah. put it on my head. Yeah, he put it on his head. Right. He said he'd used a bit. No, we used ratchet straps, clay, so we uh, drilled a couple of holes in the very top that's covered by the overlap, screwed a screw in the top and then just winched them up with the ratchet straps, right. get them in the right place. Gave us time then to set the overlap up nice and neat, locate it and get screws in. Yeah. Awesome. Don't take a genius to see That whatever you got Is hot It's melting me When you move like that You go like that Shake the fruit out of my tree Yes, we love makeup You bring out the book in me There you go oh, they were glad my boogie got tired. You know I'm drunk out. Oh, this fluttering scratch like a match you can't set on fire. But when you move like that and you move like that, you can make a blind man see. Your chocolate cookie, you bring out the boogie in me. Let's go down to the beach, I can teach you a step or two. We can drink red wine, make love in a red zip canoe. Oh yes we could, we can kick and stone, we can roll and roll, we can shake the fruit out of your tree. Yeah, chocolate cookie, yeah bring out the boogie in You make a girl bigger than me Honey, I love your style You bring out the boogie in me And you take me back to 1963 1963 season corn which has pretty much done its dash as far as human tucker goes but uh, chickens can eat it you can see that all the corns are pretty shriveled up still okay for the chickens though if you want to live a long life then eat beans tatamaha which are in a blue zone northern mexico border uh, they eat beans every day and they eat corn every day this would be the staple here. Beans, corn and squash. And the only protein they get is a little bit of field mice. Well, they get protein from beans too, because of course, that's why uh, I'm giving this to the chickens. Beans and corn, fit for a king. And those of you that have been following my channel for a few years now will recognize the front door here. This is the uh, front door of the old farmhouse, although today it's the front door of the chicken house. Come on, 
Come on. Here comes our first customer, and you can see the uh, corn cobs from uh, yesterday's feed. I've got some more for you, ladies. There you go. Is your favourite? I know you love it. Wrap your laughing gear around that. You're a bit shy. Hey, look, I've got something special today. We had this last week, didn't we? Got some beans for you too. I know you love your beans. Jeez, it took a bit of uh, doing, didn't it, eh? They're not the brightest uh, creature on the planet. Mind you, I remember when I used to work on a poultry farm years ago and I said that to my boss and he said, yeah, they may not be bright, but I like to see you lay an egg. Anybody going to have a go at this corn? Only going to take one peck. I think I'll just keep the rest of this corn here for tomorrow's feed. I'm overfeeding them a bit. Ooh, it looks like a bloody a mouse or a rat's been chewing on that, eh? Inside the, uh, inside the husk, yeah. This guy over here is more interested in his water than having his food with his mates. Chickens need a lot of water though. Give them fresh water every day. Come on ladies, are you going to try this corn? You're a bit shy, are you? Hey? You're a bit shy. Are you a bit shy? Hey? They're pretty tame, aren't they? The hand red. We'll see what happens. <laughs> if we make it like that, and we put it on the ground. Try this. There you go. Done the hard work, done the churn for you. You gonna eat that? Yeah, there it goes. Okay. Yeah, they like it when it's been chewed up, but eh? There you go. They're a little bit racist against the white ones. I don't know if it's actually race or if it's just a different breed, but they certainly um, don't like the ones that aren't brown. Look, I only come and got eggs yesterday, and I've already gotten nice, fresh ones again today. These beautiful, beautiful eggs. Really good. Fresh as old mate suddenly uh, realised that the corn's uh, quite good to eat like that. Eggs in New Zealand are really hard to get now because the poultry farms aren't allowed to uh, have the chickens in inhumane conditions. Well, I don't have any problem with that, but I think it's also it's good that we can grow our own eggs and hopefully that never stops. Hopefully there's no stupid nanny sort of state type idea about how we keep our chickens. Nobody could argue those chickens, they have the best life of any chicken on the planet. They've got a whole paddock out the back, fenced out. They roam free all day, and they get good tucker too. Now they get their heads chopped off and they stop paying the rent, but they're still paying the rent, so we keep them. Uh, I think it's going to become a time, though, worldwide eggs are going to become a premium food and hard to get hold of. And they've got so much goodness in them, eggs. Holy shit. We've got a rabbit problem. Oh dear, the bastards are everywhere. This explains why my garden has been getting ravaged. There's one there that's white. Quite comfortable in the driveway. Bloody hell. One of the things about homesteading and living in the country is you're always going to have rats and mice. So this is a live trap. And it's caught this little fella inside the house. He's got peanut butter. He's quite happy in there right now, but in a minute he's going to be dead because Pace is going to deal with him. You know what your job is, don't you, mate, eh? Yeah. You get one chance, Pace. Don't stuff it up. Okay. Get the mouse. Get the mouse. Get him. <laughs> you need to let him come out. Don't eat the peanut butter. You're gonna get. <laughs> you lost it. It's gone in the grass. Pace, down here. There he goes. Get, get him, get him, get him. Get him, Pace, Pace. Oh, you lost it. You stuffed it up. You useless dog. Pace would have killed that. You're busy eating the peanut butter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was so busy with the peanut butter, he was distracted, and now it's got away. It's gone down in the grass, it's probably going to go back into the house, into the house truck or, or back in the house. Oh, we'll catch it again. Yeah. You useless dog! Useless dog! That was funny. Yeah. Well, next time, better luck. Do you want to put it out of its misery, or should we let Pace do it? No, we can't, bro. I don't want to kill a mousey. Oh, it's a bloody mouse. Yeah, but they're actually a, a problem in the house. So I get that. 
They chew the wiring and they destroy our food. They, they destroy our crops. So do you want to go and knock it on the head? No, you can get face. Face can knock it on the head. I want to kill a mousey. No, it's not, it's not, not a not mousey, my, it's a mouse. It's not my blood to kill a living being, bro, as you know. Sorry. You're talking about it like it's a, it's a pet, like mouse. a mousey. No, it's, it's a mouse. Pet. It's not a pet mouse. Would well, you want it to have as a pet? No. You could keep it outside in your little fuddy in the little box here. Yeah, that's, yeah no, bro. I wouldn't uh, worry too much about the mouse, bro. Last time, uh, Pace let it get away, didn't you, Pace? He was busy eating. Just the one I, I, I saw, um, I saw uh, Poe catch. You fucking bit it in half just about in the field. It was just dead straight away. One yeah. chop got. Yeah, well, Poe would get this one too, but we're trying to teach Pace. Yeah, okay. Yeah, last one escaped, didn't you, eh? Yeah. Mm. I think we'll go to the end of the driveway here and put it in the gravel in the open. So the mouse has got no cover. Last time I had too much cover in the grass. Right, don't stuff it up this time. Leave it. Leave it. Leave it. Mate, face, 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 get it. Face, face here. He's bloody lost it again. It's down in here. You're useless. You're a useless dog. It's in there. Oh, I don't believe it. <laughs> you use Pace, it's in here. Pace, in here. It went down in here. It's in there, down here. Smell it out. Oh, God. I'm going to get Poe next time. Oh, get it, get it, get it, get it. Where's it gone? Oh, unbelievably useless dog. Blind. Where's it gone? I can't believe he didn't get that. You've lost it, Pace. Right, next time it's Poe's turn. Nah, you lost it. Oh, God. He's useless at mice. Poe would have smashed that. You're not going to get it, mate. You're not going to get it. You're bloody hopeless. Useless dog. So what we're doing today is we're going to grab this uh, old baleage here and we're going to use this for the garden. I just started to cut this back a bit and as you can see it's um, going to be great for the garden. It's actually broken down a lot. It's about three years old this and it's dead the seed so it'll break down and be good matter. It's actually starting to grow a bit of grass on the top. Yeah, no, there will be some fungi growing there. It's actually a great place for growing mushrooms. Look at that. Yeah, go right to the bottom bro. Definitely got a fungi growing it. It's got a that white mycelium. Bro, we certainly cultivated some mushrooms here. Yeah, yeah, chew on that. It'll take you to God. Will it? You'll find God eat it, man. Makes it a lot easier than you can. Anyway, we're gonna go and feed the uh, ducks. Ladies and gentlemen, there you go. Got some feed for you. Yeah, I thought you might be a bit hungry. Which is out, isn't it? There you go. There you go. Jeez, you get up that hill pretty well for a duck. Yeah, you go. Hey? Yeah. Got some tucker for you. There you go. Look at that. Into it. It's pretty good, isn't it, eh? This is what one and three quarter baitages looks like in here. Tristan went off to buy a car, or look at a car at least, and uh, I've done this, and I think it probably took us about 36, I counted, barrow loads to get it on there. At the end of the pile, you can see there's that big tarpaulin that's covered over dirt, it's topsoil that came from the gully where the ducks are, we dug the duck pond. So we're gonna put that on top of that and mix it with coffee grounds. But I'm also going to take my worms from my worm farm and we're going to sprinkle it along the top and cover them up so they can start to do their magic to the soil and the old baleage. Having the new subdivision go next door means you've got machinery operating all the time and reversing. And it doesn't make for a nice uh, peaceful audio in my uh, country vlogs. So I've got something going on in the background constantly. But uh, that's the reality of old Clay tall stories in his uh, current situation. I'm living with the whole development going beside me, but we've also got uh, our own works going on. Arb and Byron are working on the studio right now. I don't know how many of you people that keep sheep like me have had the same trouble that I've had when you've got two rams. 
they constantly butt heads together because they're fighting to get the upper so they can be the man and do all the servicing of the ewes. But what it's caused with my rams is them to constantly have injury on their head where they get blood and then the flies come and they get blown and then you've got to put mago on them and you've got to shear them and clean them up only for them to do it again. So I just made the executive decision to get rid of one. There he is there on the back of the trailer. I've just uh, killed him now and I'm going to make him into dog tucker. It's a shame because I enjoyed having two of those Arapa rams. They were characters but old mate here, I just cleaned him up again and he smashed his head against his old mate and he got blown again and it's like, can't keep doing this. That's not sustainable. So I'm going to uh, put him on the tree up there and, and take the skin off and make him into food for the dogs. I don't know where you get them from, but they call it a nifty lift. They can lift a V8 block. That's it there, with paracord. It's a four to one ratio. So it means lifting a beast like this is actually quite easy because you're only lifting like a quarter of it. Still, I tow it on my truck just to make things easier. Just put a line on the truck and drive forward. It lifts it up, a piece of cake. Then knock the skin off that and then drop the guts out. And I don't know if I'll cut it in half or not because it's going to be all dog tucker. I don't want to chew on a stinky old ram. Nobody does really. They've got balls and they taste like ram's balls. That's not nice to eat. You don't want to, you want to eat a hog or a lamb or even a mutton, but not a stinky old ram. He's been peeing all over himself and they smell like, they taste like piss. They, they taste pretty strong. You can make a good curry out of them and, and get that taste out, but I couldn't be asked to be honest. Going off the ground. Got the skin off and uh, I'm keeping the guts in for now because we can't show that on YouTube. But look at the fatness of it. The big old fat ram. An incredible amount of fat in it, eh? Dogs are getting some bloody good chewing. You know, I thought I'd just show you what it looks like with the skin off. They come off pretty easy sheep. They're much easier than pigs. Although I'm not particularly good at doing the process because I don't do it enough. It's like, you know, if you do it all the time you get good at it. But once or twice a year you're never going to get good. That's all his skin there. And I've got his uh, head hiding. Well, it's very rare for me to come out here and catch nothing and that's what I've done today. I've been out here since oh, this morning, got my little boat, my tiny little boat and uh, nothing. Nice to be out here but uh, just uh, small bites. Someone's dog barking on the beach. I'm only that far from the shore you can see where I come, come out, 100 metres. Uh, normally I'll catch something out here but not a bloody thing. Now it's Friday. I think it's the 10th of day of March, and uh, I think it'll be a day in history. I so I went out and oh, got a tiny little nibble there. Yeah, there might be some small stuff around, but just no snapper this close in. Sometimes there is, sometimes there isn't. I don't want to go much too further out because of the uh, being in a small boat and uh, keep it safe, you know. But no, no fish at all. Really small tiny stuff but um, I'm trying to catch the big yellow eyed mullet or kahawai or some brum but so far just I've only had tiny little wee fish which are uh, too small for eating just bait fish so this is not going to be a fishing video it's going to be a what well, is a fishing video it's not going to be a catching video that's what it's going to be it's a uh, fishing video it's just it. fishing for something and we're catching nothing when you make content and you're a content creator, you, you hope that you're going to have success because people want to see success, but the reality of life is that you don't have that all the time, isn't it? Hey, check this out. Our very first avocado. Not a biggie. It's the first one we've got, though. Isn't that cool? Got another one down here, too. Little avocados. Bloody good. Tristan planted these and seeded these, but they haven't grown very well. They haven't come up so good. Need to be in the glass house, I think. It's kale. These are grown by Troy at Rata. Um, I stuck a Caroline Reaper in there, and now I'm like, my head's top side, <laughs> lips are burning. Into my tucker head. Anyway, uh, if you like hot chilies, check out Troy's uh, chilies at. Uh, I'll show you the packet. Oh. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, boy, that's. That's hard. This is uh, the packet of uh, Troy's um, chilies, what it looks like. And, uh, yep. Yeah. <coughs> <laughs> Are you okay? <coughs> Rata Farm is where uh, these come from. Bloody hot chilies. So if you're into your hot chilies, go and check out uh, Troy's chilies down in Langstall Road. <laughs> oh, bro. 
Hey guys, I'm just uh, editing this video, finishing it off for you. Um, cracking up watching my brother actually coughing and that. He doesn't do chilies at all. I don't even know he had a chilli in his mouth. I think he might have just been uh, having a phantom chilli, imagining he was having one or choking on something else. Anyway, yeah, that was a bit of a mishmash. It's Friday 10th of March of what's happened in our week, sort of pushed into one video. I hope you guys are going well. Thanks for following the channel. appreciate uh, your subscription to the channel. I really do. Being a subscriber, it means a lot because it means that I get to uh, have a voice and someone to listen to my simple lifestyle and the friends and people and my animals, livestock and my dogs, and share it with you, which is makes the journey a bit more fun. And so long as this journey keeps on being fun, I'll keep on doing it. Uh, be good, can't be good, be careful, and I'll see you in the next Clay Tool Stories video. See you later.